Hello everyone and welcome back to our channel. In this video we're going to show you how to start fishing in five easy steps. Sounds simple enough and it really is, but whether you're a beginner or just looking to improve your skills, this tutorial will guide you through everything you need to know. I'll place a couple of pro tips throughout the video, so make sure you stay to the end. Here we go, let's get started. This is undoubtedly the boring part of fishing, but it's a necessary evil. It can be done by getting a fishing license or permit, either online or at your local sporting goods store, or by speaking with a landowner to obtain permission if you're hoping to fish on a private property. Remember, most states don't require license from folks under the age of 16, so if that's you, hey, oh, yeah. you're good to go on that part. If not, it's important to follow your state's fishing regulations. Also, everyone, regardless of age, should obtain permission on private property to avoid legal issues. The next step to start fishing is gather the right gear. You'll need a fishing rod, reel, line, hooks, and bait. Choose your gear based on the type of fishing you plan to do. But if you're just learning to fish, remember, keep it simple. The fishing rod is the long, flexible part of the tackle that you hold and cast to deliver your bait or lure into the water. Fishing rods come in different lengths, material, and styles. Some common materials include fiberglass, graphite, and bamboo. A fishing rod or pole can range from a simple cane pole to a high-end $500 bass rod. But guess what? <laughs> they all catch fish. So today we're going to keep it basic. A simple medium or medium light action rod will catch most freshwater fish and really that's what we want to do, right? Yeah! The reel is the mechanical part of the tackle that holds the line and helps you retrieve your catch. There are three main types of reels, spin cast or push buttons as some call them, spinning reels which are generally held upside down, and bait casting reels. Spin casting or push button reels are the easiest to use and are a good choice for beginners. Spinning reels are still easy to cast but can be prone to line twists and guide wraps. They do however offer smooth drags and are a great option for any level of fishing experience from beginner to expert. Bait casting reels are more advanced. They are the Cadillac of reels once you learn to use them, but they also have caused hours of frustration in tangles or bird's nests for beginning anglers. So they are better suited for experienced anglers. If you are just beginning, I recommend the spin cast or the push button. It will provide extreme fun, has adequate capabilities and maximum ease of use. And honestly, the fish don't know what kind of reel you are using when they bite. So anyway, moving on. Fishing line is the thin flexible material that connects the hook to the fishing rod. There are different types of line including monofilament, braided and fluorocarbon. The type of line you choose will depend on the type of fishing you're planning to do and the size of the fish you're targeting. Most beginners start off with panfish, so we're going to focus on that. Many professional anglers have spent countless hours trying to decide which line is right for them. The real truth is, for most beginning anglers, monofilament in the 6 to 12 pound test range is the right choice. It's cheap, easy to cast, flexible, abrasion resistant, and in most water conditions, it's fairly hard to see underwater. In fact, more sport fish have been caught on monofilament over the years than on all other types of line combined. So, uh, use the kiss method. Keep it simple, Stan, or something like that. Hooks are sharp, curved metal devices that hold the bait and catch the fish. There are different types of hooks, including J hooks, circle hooks, and treble hooks. The type of hook you choose will depend on the type of bait you're using and the size of the fish you're targeting. Most beginning anglers start fishing with J-hooks. For pan fish, choose a thin wire hook that will fit in the fish's mouth. For bluegill and sun perch species, smaller is generally better. For crappie, also known as white perch in some areas, and sackalay if you're Cajun. Aye! Choose a larger hook with a wider gap when using minnows. And speaking of minnows, let's discuss bait options. Bait is the item that's used to attract fish. There are many types of bait, including live bait, fresh bait, and artificial lures. 
The best bait for beginning anglers is live or fresh bait. Worms are the absolute winner in the bait category. Most every species of fish will eat a worm. Another great choice is crickets. They are cleaner to use than worms and can sometimes outperform worms in catching fish. We already mentioned minnows, or shiners as I like to call them, and they are a great choice for larger pan fish like crappie. But hang on to your pole because bass, catfish, and even turtles will eat all of these baits, and it's a nice surprise when you catch one on light tackle. I wanted to mention a couple more or less popular and maybe even secret fresh baits that just flat out catch panfish. And my number one winner is wasp larva. If you're in an area of the country that has wasp and can safely rob a wasp nest, the larva inside are panfish gold and are about as good of a panfish bait as you're ever going to use. And hey, your neighbors will probably thank you for their removal. A word of caution, however, acquiring this bait is not for the faint of heart. Another notable mention includes canned corn, bread, and wieners. Yep, good old American hot dogs. Not necessarily the best bait of choice, but if the fish don't eat it, well, you can. <laughs> Win-win, right? Okay, back to the show. Artificial lures can be highly effective in skilled hands. The best for panfish include small jigs and spinners. I would, however, recommend starting with live or fresh bait. Once fish are located and feeding good, try an artificial. They are the cleanest type of bait, and when the fish are biting, will outcatch live bait because you never have to rebait your hook. The next step is to find a good fishing spot. Look for a location with plenty of fish, such as a lake, a river, or a stream. Research the area to determine the best time to fish and what types of fish are likely to be caught there. Most states have websites that will provide lists of public stock lakes, rivers, or streams. Don't neglect to consider farm ponds, or tanks as they call them in Texas. These are generally privately owned and permission will be needed, but can provide the beginning fishermen with a safe, secluded, and potentially bountiful spot to cast a line. You'd be surprised at how many farm owners will support and even give free advice to new anglers, especially the younger ones. And you'd be even more surprised at the quality of fish that live in these small honey holes. According to the latest and greatest AI technology, a honey hole is a term used in fishing to refer to a location where fish are abundant and easily caught and considered as a sweet spot. The term probably originated from the idea of a beehive as a source of sweet, rich honey and applied to fishing spots as a metaphor for a place where fishermen can find a rich source of fish. <laughs> so anyway, that's cool. Now, how are we gonna find that honey hole? Stay tuned for the final pro tip at the end of this video. In the meantime, we can locate fish by studying the water. Look for areas with vegetation, such as lily pads, reeds, or weed beds. Bluegill or other panfish typically reside in these areas because they provide a safe place for them to hide from predators and they're a good source of food. Another way to locate fish is to look for areas with structures such as drop-offs, underwater humps, or rocks. These areas provide cover and a place for fish to ambush their prey. If you're fishing in a lake or a pond, it's a good idea to look for areas near the inflow or outflow of a stream or river. Fish often congregate in these areas because of the abundance of food and oxygen. Lastly, don't forget to pay attention to the weather. On sunny days, fish are often found in deeper water or along shady structures, but on cloudy days, they tend to be in the shallower water. Once you've found your spot, it's time to bait your hook. We've already discussed your bait choices, so just pick your favorite. With your bait on the hook, it's time to cast your line. Hold the rod with both hands and use your dominant hand to manipulate the reel. On spin cast reels, continue to hold down the button as you swing your rod over your shoulder and then begin your cast. Then release the button as your arm moves forward and in the direction you want to throw. Practice makes perfect, so don't be afraid to try a few casts before you get the hang of it. Once you've got a fish on the line, it's time to reel it in. Keep the rod tip up and slightly bent to keep the slack out of the line. This helps keep the hook from coming loose. Use the reel to bring the fish closer, be patient, and let the fish tire itself out. Once landed, gently remove the hook and release the fish back into the water. Or you can place it on a stringer, or in a bucket, or in a live well. It's really up to you. For those of you still watching to the end, here's the honey hole pro tip when it comes to locating fish. It requires the sacrifice of a few crickets, 
but boy, it can pay big dividends, especially in shallow water. Once you're in a generally fishy area, throw several live, unhooked crickets into the water in different directions around the boat, or several feet apart down the shoreline if you're bank fishing. Then wait a few seconds. The crickets will float on the surface and begin swimming away. Watch for the cricket that gets eaten first and cast there first. I bet it won't take long till you'll be hooked up on your first fish. And that's it. You're now ready to start fishing. Remember to always follow the fishing regulations in your area and practice catch and release if you don't intend to eat your fish. This ensures the health and longevity of the fish population. And who knows, you might catch him once again and he'll be even bigger. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.